Hello, everyone. I'm Ivar Lazzaro, software engineer from Cisco. Uh, I am uh, Miguel uh, from uh, Red Hat, and a software engineer in Red Hat. I'm Justin Pettit. I work on uh, Open vSwitch for VMware. And I'm Thomas Croft. I work for Cisco as well, and I work on OVS and the Linux kernel. So today, we're going to talk to you about Neutron and how to improve data path performance with um, Open full open vSwitch solution for security groups. So at a very high level, this discussion will go through a problem statement and a possible solution to this problem. And more importantly, we are going to show you the, the performance result, which will compare our solution with the, with the initial problem. So let's start from the beginning. Whenever you create a virtual machine today in, um, in OpenStack, using Neutron ML2 Open vSwitch driver, your compute node looks more or less like this. And you can clearly see that there is something wrong with this. And more specifically, what you have is a couple of, of Open vSwitch. So one is for the uplink, and the other one is the integration bridge. And when you trigger the VM creation, uh, Nova is going to create the v a v pair and one side of this pair will be attached to the integration bridge, and the other side will be attached to, a set, to one Linux bridge per VM. So you can see there is an extra layer of indirection here. And, um, and on top of all this, there is going to be a tap interface or even an extra v depending on what you're attaching to these, to these bridges. And they, and they will connect the VM to the, to the Linux bridge. So for each VM you create, you're going to create from four to five network devices. And definitely, when you see this, you may ask why you're doing this. And you may think that the answer is this one. But in reality, the answer is security groups. So security groups in Neutron uh, is a way to provide port level security to Neutron users which means that the filtering rules you specify with security groups are brought as close as possible to the, to the virtual machine itself. And, uh, and these architectures are used, used so that you can push your IP table rules in, this, in these intermediate Linux bridges and open flow rules in the integration bridge for tenant isolation. And, and then you can ask, why not doing all this with open vSwitch? And the, and the open flow rules. Well, the reason is that at the time this was implemented in the Neutron community, there, there were not enough tools from, from open switch to, to make a solution which was in feature parity with what uh, IP tables would offer. But you will know more about, about this throughout the presentation. So how can we stack things properly in, in, in this architecture? One possible solution, for instance, could be to remove that extra layer of bridges so that when you create your VMs or even containers, you can use just one single device for attaching them to the integration bridge and, um, and using open flow rules for, um, for implementing security <coughs> group with the new tools that Open Switch can offer us. But before going further, let's go with some background with Justin. So first I wanted to uh, just go over quickly what Open vSwitch is. I think most people are probably familiar, so we'll do this fairly quickly. But uh, Open vSwitch is a virtual switch uh, that works at multiple layers of the uh, OSI layer. And uh, it has extensive uh, programming capabilities. Uh, so to program how you want to treat beha uh, flow behavior, you, you can use the OpenFlow protocol. And we support um, all versions of OpenFlow, although not all the features are necessarily supported, and a number of vendor extensions. And actually, the vendor extensions are one of the things that we'll be talking about today to uh, enable the connection tracking. Uh, the, probably the biggest use case for OVS is uh, supporting tunnels so that we can create overlay networks. And uh, in addition to using OpenFlow to configure the, the flow table, uh, we have this OVSDB protocol that can be used to remotely manage other aspects, for example, creating bridges and tunnels. And then it has uh, extensive monitoring capabilities as well. And wanted to mention a new project, uh, OVN, for Open Virtual Network, uh, or we call it Oven. 
Uh, and so this is a new project that we've uh, created that will provide virtual networking for OBS. And it's made by the, the same team uh, that has made uh, OBS, and it will have it work on a, a number of different platforms. So it'll work on Linux, Hyper-V, and uh, we've designed it from the beginning to work with containers as well. And so the, the point of OVN is to create virtual network, as I, as I mentioned. And so we'll have support for logical switches and routers, uh, ACLs, and uh, software and hardware-based uh, logical to physical gateways. But sort of, of you know, in, most interest uh, to this group is that from the beginning, we'll be using this new connection tracking based uh, model to implement security groups, which will uh, have much better performance and security than what's uh, currently available. And it works, of course, with OpenStack as well as other CMSs. So to implement a firewall in OVS, and this is why we ended up with that model that, uh, that was uh, shown before where we had to go through IP tables, that OpenFlow is really designed just to work with stateless, uh, it just does uh, sta stateless matches. Uh, so you can match on what's in a particular field for packet and maybe some metadata. But that doesn't work for something like a firewall where you need state. So to, do, uh, to implement a firewall in OVS, in the past, there were basically two ways that you could do it. You could implement it uh, matching on the TCP flags. So you could, uh, for example, um, enforce your policy on the SYN packets and then allow all ACK and reset packets through. And so this works pretty well because uh, you can uh, create mega flows, which are a way of doing wildcarding in the kernel. Uh, but the problem is that that is not really a great security solution because you're letting all ACK and resets through. You're not just allowing connections that had been, been allowed previously. Uh, another option, which is a little bit more secure, is that OVS supports this learn action, which allows you to insert new flows into the, to an existing open flow table. And the way that this works is that when a packet comes in that you want to allow, you look at the ephemeral port, so for example, the TCP source port, and then you create a reverse flow um, that will allow the return traffic through. And this, is, this works a lot better because you're only allowing previously established connections in. But the problem is that this um, is really slow because we can't do things like mega flows, we can't do wildcarding in the kernel, so every new flow has to go to user space. And this, this can affect performance by orders of magnitudes for, for, uh, for uh, flow setup. And neither of these work with things like uh, you know, allowing FTP data connections through, um, and they don't do things like enforce the TCP window. So Linux has this feature called contract. It's a module within the kernel. And this is actually what IP tables uses as well. And its job is fairly simple. All it needs to do is, uh, well, it keeps track of all of the, the connection entries. So it's a this very specific job. It doesn't enforce policies. It just says, is this a new connection? Um, or is this a previously established connection? Uh, or is this a related connection? So as I mentioned, the FTP example, maybe it's the FTP data channel. And so what we can do is use OVS by, we can add the, the state of the connection to the metadata of the packet that we're looking up. And so this kind of allows us to do stateless matching on something that's stateful. And that's how we were, this is how the proposed uh, solution works. And so what we will do is um, there will be a new action to send to this connection tracking module. And then we will kick the packet back to OVS to have another look at it, this time with the connection uh, status bits. And so um, I don't think I need to preach why it's good to do things at the edge, but uh, it's much, you know, it's better to, um, better performance doing this at the edge. You don't have a central choke point, and you have better visibility because you're doing the detection closer to the source of the traffic as opposed to, um, to further away, so you have more context. And so we actually have a working prototype of this. Uh, this will be going into OBS 2.4. The code's actually been ready for quite a while, but we've been working with the Linux kernel community um, to get this upstreamed. Because while uh, we have control of the OBS user space parts, the kernel is actually maintained by the kernel community. And so while we can make suggestions about what's included, it's not ultimately our choice. But we think we're making some progress there. So um, here's just a, a diagram of what the, the flow of the traffic will look like. So if you have here in one, the, uh, the traffic will, will come in and hit this OVS flow table. And the OVS flow table will say, OK, well, we want to enforce a security um, policy here. Um, but we need to know what the, the state of the connection is. So then through this contract action, 
we will send it to the uh, NetFilter connection tracker. And that, keeps, that um, has a, a hash table over here that maintains the state of all of the connections. And so now when the, the packet will, be, um, will go back to the um, OVS flow table, and this time it will have the connection state set, so we'll know if it's a new connection or an established connection. And but what we do is then we kick the packet back to the OVS flow table now with those connection status bits set. And now we can enforce the policy and say, if it's, a, if it's in a new state and we don't want to allow the traffic from the, the, the source, uh, then we can enforce that policy. And one of the features that we use that, um, the, that uh, the contract uh, supports is this idea of multiple zones. And this allows us to uh, be able to um, have overlapping addresses, which you need in an overlay network. So if you have um, two IP addresses that are the same, um, you won't have them conflict with each other. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to um, to explain how, how how we put this all together for the uh, neutron security groups. Uh, the work is based on the original proposal by Amir Sadugi. I don't know if he's around. If you're around, thank you. <laughs> um, and uh, you have uh, the code for the proof of concept available on, on the second URL as a great review. Uh, basically, uh, we implement the, the firewall driver interface uh, that is used on the OBS. Uh, agent of, of Neutron, we, uh, we have methods to update security group rules and members, we, uh, we have uh, methods to manipulate and uh, create uh, firewall rules for new ports, and this module, this module basically translates all those um, methods and calls into open flow rules with the connection uh, special connection tracking rules. We uh, we try. Well, we, we didn't try. We we actually uh, made open flow rules in parity with uh, the current state of APT walls filtering. So we have all the anti-spoofing rules that for port security, and uh, we also have a source MAC filtering that is not yet available for APT walls. Uh, and uh, I'm going to uh, put uh, a little example without going into too much de in detail with two VMs uh, talking to each other with a typical HTTP connection. Uh, VM1 uh, has, uh, is an, a security group where all the outgoing traffic is allowed and VM2 is an, a security group where only port 80 is allowed. Uh, so, uh, we, we have a shortcut for ARP rules, uh, for ARP traffic with uh, some filters to avoid spoofing. So they can learn uh, each other's IP address. And here's where I won't go into too much detail. You can see it on the slide later. But basically for the first packet going out from one VM to, to another, uh, it will have to match the, the specific rule that it's allowing the traffic, and we put that in the connection tracking table. And then this packet goes to the second VM. In this case, everything is on the same host. So it will have to match the incoming rule that allows the, the destination port, and that it sends to VM2. So later traffic, uh, uh, the outgoing traffic that normally will then be allowed for VN2 because it doesn't have a, an uh, output filter to allow anything out, will go through the, uh, okay, one, one slide way down, but basically uh, it will hit the, this rule saying that any, any traffic that is tracked with an established or related uh, a state will act as a will will go to the destination port. It will act as as a normal switch. So everything goes pretty fast. And 
Thanks, Miguel. Uh, we've seen that we have a possible way to simplify how the bridge model will look like on the um, compute node. And we also saw that we'll be able to solve all of this with OVS and later on OVN. But none of that would matter if the performance numbers aren't right. And I think this is what most people came here for, like how, how are the numbers? And fortunately, they're looking pretty good. But before we go into the numbers, I want to explain like what exactly we measure, because comparing numbers is very difficult. And uh, we, have to, we, we have to know what, 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 what kind of setup we're talking about, given, given the numbers I'm about to show you. So basically, we have two compute nodes. And we're running NetPerf and uh, corresponding net server pair on each of the compute nodes. The compute nodes are uh, an Ivy Bridge 24 core machine, two socket machine uh, with 3.5 3 gigahertz uh, CPUs. We're running a uh, RHEL 7 3.10 kernel, and we have eliminated the virtualization overhead. And I'm going to explain why. We, what we really want to measure is the performance of the actual packet processing and security group enforcement and not the path in and out of the VM. So the numbers here are NetPerf and NetServer running bare metal on the actual compute nodes. So this would be what you would receive by running a container and not necessarily an actual VM on the compute nodes. So these numbers, are, we will not see these numbers if you run VMs. We will have additional virtualization overhead, uh, in particular if you're using Vert.io and software mode. We're always showing two different numbers. Local, meaning packet goes over the loopback. This would be one container talking to another container on the same compute node, or one VM to another VM on the same compute node, and multi-node, which is across the network, uh, where we have a 10 gig uh, NIC. We're doing TCP stream tests for various packet sizes, and we're doing TCP requests, uh, number of requests per second. So this. The stream is measuring bandwidth or throughput, and the requests per second is measuring latency, right? The more requests, the, the lower the latency, the more requests per second you can get through. All right, enough explanation. Let's dig into the numbers. On all the slides, we'll always see um, a dark blue and a light blue. The dark blue is the existing security enforcement of security groups through IP tables, and the light blue is a pure OVS solution. The bar is, in this case, representing the bandwidth in megabits. And the line is representing the number of CPU cycles spent. So for the bar, higher is better. And for the line, lower is better, because we are spending less cycle per megabit. And what we can see here is that OVS is doing better uh, on all packet sizes. So from 64 byte minimal packet sizes all the way to 64K jumbo frames doing GSO. Uh, we're seeing 22 uh, megabit, uh, gigabit, sorry, gigabit, so 22,000 uh, megabit on, on, local, uh, on a local TCP stream. So OES is doing fairly better. And on, on the left side, for the smaller piece, uh, for the smaller numbers, you can see another essential piece, which is OES is doing better and at the same time consuming less CPU cycles. Consuming less CPU cycle means that those cycles are available for your actual workloads. So we're not wasting them uh, for actual packet pack processing. So this is local. And it's a, a single net per thread. That's one core sending packets, one net per thread sending packets. Obviously, if you have multiple containers, you would have multiple core sending. So this is what this uh, slide is representing. And we're seeing for 60 net per threads sending local, uh, we're seeing OVS is doing extremely better for la large packets. But we're also seeing something that we're still, in, uh, still looking into, which is this piece here. For certain packet sizes, the OVS solution is doing worse. Uh, we, were, we were looking into this, and we actually noticed that on a different system, we didn't see this, this, uh, this glitch. Um, this is definitely something we need to look into before we can get this merged. This is the only uh, occasion we, we found where OBS was not doing better. So this is local driving again. Let's go into multi-node. So this is going over the network and over a 10 gig NIC. 
And you can see we are, we are hitting line rate uh, at the size of uh, 512 byte uh, size packets. Um, interestingly, like both the IP table space solution and the OVS solution are doing the same performance, but OVS is using less CPU cycles. And for smaller packet sizes, that's the first two bars, OVS is doing better and even consuming less cycles per, per megabit. TCP requests, that's a number, that's a, a TCP request being sent to the server, sent back, and then the, clo the, 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 the connection is closed, and then the next request is being sent. So this is measuring latency. And we can see in this case, local over the loop back, one net perf thread uh, with varying packet sizes from 64 bytes to 64K. We can see OVS is doing better for, for all of them and consuming considerably less CPU cycles as well. This is TCP requests scale. Like, how does it scale using one core, four cores, eight cores, 16 cores? Uh, OVS is doing better at all of them. And we can, in this case, we can see something very interesting. That as we scale up, IP tables is always doing like about the same degree worse. For 16 cores, remember, this is a 24 core machine. So we have 16 cores sending and 16 cores or 16 tasks receiving, meaning we have a total of 32 net per threads sending and receiving. And for the IP tables case, there seems to be some kind of um, contention issue because the performance is actually worse with 16 cores or 16 tasks than with, with, with eight, while OBS is scaling up. You can, you can see this clearly. The CPU cycle spent with the IP table solution is exploding at 16 cores, whereas with OBS, it's, 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 it's fairly even, right? Multi-node. Um, this is sending TCP requests over, over the NIC. Obviously, uh, the NIC is, is, uh, is putting an upper cap here. You can see OBS is doing uh, better in all, for all packet sizes. You can see the, the larger the packet size gets, the more CPU cycles we need to spend, obviously, because there is more data to send. Same, same, uh, same numbers, but for, uh, for number of cores, like how does it scale? Um, again, we can see OBS is scaling nicely. Um, OBS uses the same number of, almost the same number of cycles per, per request, um, regardless of the number of cores utilized. Whereas for the IP table solution, the number of, of, of cycles consumed is increasing the more cores we use for actual packet sending. So OBS, the OBS-based solution scales much, much better. Conclusion. We have noticed that both throughput and latency is considerably better than the IP table space solution, except for that single location that I showed in the second performance slide. And we are still investigating that. And we are pretty, we're, we're fairly convinced that it's either a bug or it's something specific with that system um, that we'll, we'll definitely verify and explain that and try to uh, find or we'll, we'll, find the, well, we'll find the root cause before we attempt an upstream merge. Um, if limited by a, by a NIC, OVS is consuming less CPU cycles, which is highly interesting for any kind of compute workload, right? All right, I'm gonna cover next steps, like the kernel side. I'm gonna hand it over to Miguel for the, for the other ones. So, as Justin already mentioned, we're, this work will be available in the 2.4 release of OVS. Um, there is kernel support that is needed for this feature to work. It's, it's integration of connection tracking with the kernel, and we are working with the upstream communities to get that um, included. We're going through the standard process, and. Um, Working on, 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 um, on the feedback that we are receiving, we're fairly um, convinced that we'll, we'll, we'll get it merged in the next couple of weeks. At that point, we will, I think, finally release OVS 2.4, and we can go full steam ahead and actually uh, do the OpenStack piece as well. Uh, Miguel, do you want to cover the OpenStack next yeah. steps? Um, on the uh, Neutron side of uh, OpenStack, uh, what we have now is just a proof of concept, so we have a, li a, li a few gaps to cover. We need to write uh, functional tests to verify that the, all the security group cases and corner cases work uh, as we want. 
Uh, currently, we are only handling uh, IPv4 traffic, and we have to cover the gap for IPv6. Um, we have, we also have a few gaps with uh, when we switch uh, port rules. There is right now we de we delete the old rules and set the new one, so there is a, a few instant when you don't have security on your port, and that's not good. But it's just a matter of refining that, and uh, also we need. Of course, to, to propose this to the Neutron up, upstream community formally, uh, we write down a specification and we all uh, decide how, how we are going to do it. Uh, and uh, despite that, uh, we are planning uh, that uh, there, there is a proposal to, to put, as we have done for all the other drivers, to put the, um, the reference implementation out of the tree. Uh, it, it's still valuable for for uh, experimentation or, or for yeah to have another solution, another open source solution, and uh, also uh, of course uh, this uh, will have to be uh, integrated in the into the OBN solution to have uh, for security. Hopefully, this will be available for liberty. And uh, as a last note, um, we have a, a background configuration. If you want to try this on your own compute, uh, on your own uh, NavVM locally, uh, you can use this background definition to, to deploy uh, RDO Juno uh, with the back port of this patch and try it locally. Uh, you, you, it will compile the, last, the latest uh, OBS with uh, connection tracking and uh, make everything available to you in, in the dashboard. And, uh, and, and so then just a, a link to the main OBS uh, project. Uh, the connection tracking code uh, currently is in uh, my private repo, but uh, we Hopefully, once that or once that gets uh, upstreamed in the kernel, we'll merge that into the main OBS uh, repo and into master. Uh, and then this was a presentation that Thomas and I did at the OBS conference back in November, and it has additional data, a little bit more details about how the work works or how the, how um, connection tracking works, and also um, some different performance numbers, additional performance numbers. And with that, I think we uh, have just a, a couple minutes for questions, if there are any. Okay. Um, yeah. Should repeat the question. Uh, you just need um, to switch the question. Uh, uh, the question is uh, that uh, when we use this implementation, if we only need to switch the security uh, group firewall driver, and yeah, it's you only need to do that. There are a few changes to to Neutron to properly communicate to Nova that we don't need the hybrid beef driver, but that's all. So far. So to, to integrate with that, also keep in mind that there may be parts in the in the overview switch agent in which you may need to change the priority of the rules because now that everything is living in the integration bridge, some priorities may need to change. So there may be yeah. small changes in the and, agents as well. And of course, we need. Do you, do you prefer when the backward compatibility with the current security <coughs> we happen to set the obvious agents with the rules? The rules will be completely compatible. Okay. Yeah, well, of course, we will need the new version of OBS with CT. Otherwise, <laughs> it won't work. But. So the question was, uh, since OBS is stateless, where are the IP tables rules stored? So, so there are no IP tables rules. So what we're doing is that the the... Yeah, the, they're written in the open flow flow table. So you would write a flow which is, you know, matches on the, the you know, enforced based on the, the IP address and the, the, the port. Which the bottom slide? Okay, yes. So there, yes, there's more details about how the connection tracker works in that. Sorry? 
That is a present. Oh, yeah, it's online too. So if you if you go to the Omean OBS webpage, you can find where there's uh, links to the videos of the conference. Okay. Yes. So we do analytics on all of the <coughs> firewalls, all the security events in our enterprise, both in the cloud and not in the cloud. Yeah. So we took the ML2 for OVS that writes the IP tables rules, hacked it up a little bit so that we get IP tables logs of all the drops and all the accepts. Mm -hmm. Any thought on how you could generate those security event logs in your solution when you don't use IP tables? I think uh, some, of the, some of those stats will be available through the connection tracker itself, right, Thomas? And then I think... Don't want, I, I don't want stats. I actually want log events for all the drops and the accepts. Are you about, um, you're talking about auditing, right? You're, if, if, if you drop a packet, you if want I to have If I drop a packet, I yeah. want a, a log event. That totally does not, like through the audit system, that does not exist for OVS. But that is definitely something that we could add. So what we're talking about is that there's an audit system in the kernel couple of FS links, for example, and if you drop a packet, there's an audit IP tables target that will, will lock the event that I've dropped a packet in the audit subsystem. Uh, that's definitely something that we could implement in OBS through an audit action, for example. Yes. That currently doesn't ex does not exist, though. Thank you. Uh, migration, are you guys looking into it from IP tables to the new implementation? Uh, not yet. Uh, during the, um, our benchmarks, we had of course, we have to switch back and forth for, for both solutions. Um, online, uh, offline migration, you switch off the VM, uh, all the VMs on a compute node, you switch the driver, and you restart the OBS agent, and you start the VMs again, that works. So, but if you want online, that's... There may probably be solutions with live migration, so you could... Uh, you could place this, this new solution in an empty host, for instance, and then you can move the yeah. VMs from another one and do it again yeah. with line migrations, but this is not something we, we dig into. Any questions? Okay. More questions? All right. Um, so with, um, with live migration, uh, does Connection Tracker support that? Is there any code you have to add, or does that just work? Well, there, I mean, there is the, um, since we use the, the Connection Tracker from the kernel, there is the contract utilities as part of, um, that, that ship it with, with Linux, and so you could imagine using something like Contract D, but I'm not sure of all the implications. There probably have to be some OpenStack integration to make sure that all of the mappings happen correctly. Yeah, okay. If we wanted to do that, we could deploy Contract D between the original node and the new node. And yeah, I figured you could do work. that, just wondering if you've done the work yet or no, anything no. to do with the timing and, and so on. So basically, we're, okay. at, we're at the stage that we're presenting the numbers and we are we're looking for feedback whether we should you know, continue with this work and uh, against, if there is an official driver, then migration is the next step, obviously. Okay, great. Hi. Um, if, if you're using kernel contract, do you know, is, is it a separate database to the one maintained by IP tables? Because in the past I've had problems where the contractor has seen a packet twice. So for example, if there's a reset, the state will be torn down and then something else, say for example, at the moment a Linux bridge IP table sees it again and rejects the packet. So it, is the contract database being kept by this separate to the one that IP tables keeps? Basically you can have both. Like as Justin explained, there, there are zones and if you put them into a separate zone, you can have a zone for your IP tables managed connection tracking entries and one for OBS. But if you put them into the same zone, then the OBS connection tracking entries can be the same and as seen by IP tables as well. So you could have, for example, the state created by OBS, and you can match on the state from, from IP tables. Yeah. Basically, in, in the current uh, proof of concept, there are some details to fix, but uh, basically every different tenant network goes to a different zone. So overlapping IPs are not going to be a problem, and also connections on the host will be out of any zone, so they are independent, are independent connection tracking tables. Great, thank you. Possibly as a slight follow-up to the last question, or is there any performance characteristics that, uh, due to the size of the contract table with uh, this work or not? 
Absolutely. Uh, but since like the IP table space solution and OVS is using the same contract uh, technology, they will have, they should have the same issues, I would say. Thank you. For the, the upstream uh, kernel work, is, is that going to be available as a kernel module that will work in, you know, what we're deploying today, CentOS 7 or that, or we're going to go back to the bad old days where you have to install custom kernels? Do you want to take it? Should I? Yeah. Um, so basically, same for us, any new kernel feature, right? You need a backport into your distribution kernel. But I think given the attention that is being paid to this feature at this point, I think all the distributions will be, will be happy to backport that for you and make it available in your favorite distribution kernel. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, this is yeah? ah, okay. His question is if uh, currently in the Neutron implementation, the reference implementation with the B tables, there is an issue uh, when you switch rules in your um, yeah in, in your security group that uh, maybe existing connections will still keep flowing because they are in the connection table. So yeah, we are we are uh, leveraging the zones of connection tracking. So and uh, using the same strategy that uh, AP tables is going to have. That's still under development. That means that when you change um, a security group with uh, new rules, uh, basically if you take out rules, uh, it's going to reset the connection tracking table for that zone. That of course will break other connections, but it's more secure than leaving uh, connections flowing. It's a standard perfect because you are, mm, I think that, uh, yeah, in some cases it's going to break some connections. But It's really a matter of how the rules are written. Uh, so the connection tracker doesn't actually have policy in it, it just has the state of the connections. So if, the, if you write a OVS rule that says allow all established connections, then yeah, it would continue to flow. If you wrote it a little bit more specific than that, um, that, you know, that reflects the, the new policy, so it's established and it matches the policy, then, uh, then it would be enforced. Yeah, so, so the question was, uh, how will this work on other platforms that aren't Linux-based? And so uh, I think that the plan is that uh, we will, there will probably be an effort to create a connection tracker that works on other platforms like DPDK and Hyper-V. Questions? Okay, I think that's good. Thank All you. Right, thank you. Thank you.